are 10 new tips and tricks I learned after playing 2,000 hours in Stardew Valley. 1. Save at least 20 or more of every item you get every season. I say 20 or more because after a few years of collecting, you will be able to use it for bigger quests. This will be helpful for the community center bundles, for community and help wanted quests, and can be put in seed makers to get extra for free, which is especially helpful for rare seeds like ancient fruit. 2. Never place machines outdoors because debris can replace it. Debris works by spreading through proximity, so if you have a rock next to a machine, it will probably be replaced the next day. So you can either place your machines in your house, a second house, which you can buy for only 100g, or even a shed. It'll be a lot safer in there. 3. Once you earn 10,000g in the game, Demetrius comes to your house and asks if you would either like a fruit bat cave or a mushroom cave. Now this has been an ancient debate for a very long time. However, after the 1.6 update, the choice is very easy, and it would be the mushroom cave. This is because picking the mushroom cave comes with a dehydrator, which gives you product where it gives 7 times the base price of either fruits and mushrooms. And this is really OP because 6 mushrooms are produced every other day. You might argue that fruits are better options since they're produced every day. And while that's true, it's also important to consider that it takes 2-3 to three days for the fruit jelly to be produced. So the mushroom cave is a far better option, especially with the fact that the dehydrator comes with it for free which would otherwise cost you 10,000 G for the recipe. 4. An important building that is really underrated and forgotten is the fish pond. Usually the first building made is a coop, and although it is very helpful, the fish pond is also a pretty good investment early game. It costs 200 stone, 5 seaweed, and 5 green algae, and putting any fish in it gives you rope, which you can put in a preserve jar and sell. And also it gives you a range of rewards based on the fish. The most profitable ones are lava eel from level 100 of the mines, the blobfish which gives pearls, and sturgeon which gives you caviar, rainbow trout gives you a prismatic shard and spookfish gives you a treasure chest which you can sell for 5k each. 5. Another important detail that many new players miss is these worms in the ground. Digging out these worms with a hoe gives you unique artifacts or even mystery boxes. Artifacts can be given to Gunther to add to the museum collection. You might be thinking, eh, I don't really care about the museum. But you actually get some pretty good rewards, like starfruit, which you can turn into wine, which is the most profitable item in the game, various decorations, and you can unlock the sewers this way too. Also, two other important mistakes not to make is one, donating your first prismatic shard, because those are really rare, and the other one is donating your first dino egg. These are also very rare to get, and it's better to hatch one first so that you have a continuous source of those eggs before donating one. Along with collecting artifact items, digging up these worms can sometimes sometimes give you various books. For instance, digging the ground in the mines has a chance of dropping mining monthly, which gives you mining experience. Or you could get the farmer's almanac, which gives you farming experience. 6. Becoming friends with villagers. You might think it's a hassle to always go out of your way for them, and also how they're never at their workplace ever, ahem Marnie, but it is still very important and here's why. Becoming friends with villagers makes them like you and give you gifts. For gifts, you can just place a chest down in each individual's house or work they frequent and fill it with loved gifts. This way you don't have to waste inventory space carrying all the items and you also don't risk forgetting it at home. And also, spoiler ahead, but becoming friends with villagers means you can take them to the movies, which is always fun. 7. Not making sprinklers for your farm. In the early game, watering your plants manually can sometimes drain all your energy, with the only remaining option being resting in your bed. However, with sprinklers, you won't have this problem. Every day at 6am, the sprinklers water the plants for you automatically. Hello, freedom to do anything and everything in Stardew Valley. You can also place torches on sprinklers, finally. 8. Not petting and feeding your animals every day. This can be the difference of getting either more money from large eggs or milk. The silo is not necessary until winter as you can just place coops or barns near any grassy area. Another important mistake not to make is cutting any grass unless you have a silo and also while using a site. Cutting grass with a site when you have a silo ensures you actually store the grass that you cut. Otherwise, it just gets cut and wasted, and the silo automatically feeds any coops or barns that it can. Which means you don't have to go to Marnie to buy it, which is a very big W because she's never there. 9. 
Related to animals, another common mistake new players make is selling animal products raw. In Stardew Valley, artisan products sell for a much higher value than their raw counterparts. So if you have eggs, it's better to just store them until you have a mayonnaise machine, or for milk, it's best to store them until you have a cheese press. You might think that storing too many eggs or milk might be bad as it takes up storage space, but you can always expand your artisan equipment and make better use of those items. Number 10, 1.6 spoilers ahead by the way for this one. Not using tents. This is one of the newest features of the update, and it's honestly so helpful. With the tent, you never risk passing out anywhere. Passing out in Stardew Valley after the new update has been a lot more forgiving than it used to be. Earlier, if you passed out outside your farm, you could lose up to 8 items, and you could also lose a lot of money. However, after the update, there's a cap on items lost, which is 3. And also, the amount of money you lose now is based on how much you have. So if you have less money, you lose less. But if you have a lot of money, then you lose a lot. So just make sure you have a tent on you at all times so that whenever you need it, you have it. 11. Not using the fortune teller on the TV correctly. Every day in Stardew Valley, there's a chance that you can have very good luck, a little good luck, neutrality, or bad luck. For instance, on days of bad luck, you might want to avoid the mines as finding ladders can be pretty difficult. Number 12. This one is like the biggest one ever because even I didn't do it not going through trash. Looking through trash can actually be really beneficial, especially early game. It also depends on which garbage cans you look through. In most general bins, you can find gems like amethyst, quartz, or topaz. And after reaching the bottom of the mines, you can find rarer gems like rubies, diamonds, emeralds, and so on. You can find copper, iron, and gold bars outside of Clint's house. And you could even find bread, field snack, or joja cola. The best place to go searching through trash is outside the star drop saloon. You usually end up finding the dish of the day in the trash, and it's usually pretty good. 